Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the First Presbyterian Church. We're glad to have everyone here this morning. And I will tell you, it is delightful to be back. So thank you for a couple of weeks off, but it is a delight to be back here worshiping with you this morning. So thank you. Thank you. It's good to be back. Um, we have some announcements, exciting things going on, because today is Palm Sunday and this starts Holy Week. And Holy Week is a wonderful time of celebration, but also of remembrance of all that Christ has done for us. So, Monday, Thursday, we will have a service in the chapel. Um, and this will be a communion service to celebrate Monday, Thursday. Remember the, the night that Christ broke bread with his disciples and went on to the cross. That service will start at 7 p.m. Um, I am looking for readers. If you are planning to attend and you can stand up and read a piece of scripture, I need 10 people to read as part of that service. There is a list out there and the parts are already printed out. So put your name by the part that you're willing to read. The part that goes with that sheet of paper is highlighted in yellow on the number. So if you are planning to attend and can read a short piece of scripture, please sign up and, and help us with the reading of the scripture that night. Then, Easter Sunday morning, we're going to gather out on the lawn, on the grass across the street, and have 7 o'clock worship service out there together, and everyone's welcome to attend. Following that, we're going to have breakfast in the basement. So, if you want to come, come for, for worship with us at 7, and then come on in and have, have breakfast with us. If you can't make the service is 7, but you still want to have breakfast, we will actually serve breakfast until 9.30. So come and join us. If you're inclined, please bring something to share. It is a kind of a covered dish breakfast, breakfast, but I'm sure there'll be plenty for everyone. So please come, join us. We're having breakfast casseroles, and who knows what else may sh might show up. Come join us for breakfast next Sunday morning. We are also still having our regular 10 o'clock worship service in here on Easter Sunday, and that will be a communion service. Um, today, after Sunday school, we hope the children will be able to stay. There will be an Easter egg hunt after worship today. Also, this afternoon at 3 o'clock, we're going to play bingo. And this is not just for the kids. I hope, so, hope that lots of folks will come and join us for bingo. We have a whole bag of prizes already. But if you've got a white elephant item and you're going to come play bingo, bring a white elephant thing wrapped in a paper bag. Just drop it in a brown paper bag and bring it as a prize. And we'll, that way we'll have lots of prizes for everybody. Um, we don't want anybody to go out and spend a bunch of money. No, nope, just bring something, something that would be a fun prize. Um, prize. Um, and come, we'll play bingo for about an hour, or hour and a half, and we're gonna have ice cream, and I got tons of toppings to go on the ice cream, make it fun. So, bingo and ice cream this afternoon here, here at the church, and we usually do that up here. So it's upstairs, you don't have to, have to worry, and we're not doing that outside either. Okay, <laughs> um, I have, that we have one birthday this week. Do I see Kathy Woodward here this morning? Is Kathy here? In She's in Texas. Oh boy, I've been there. <laughs> so, all right. Well, if you see Kathy, tell her happy birthday. Her birthday is on Tuesday. Are there other announcements, things I have forgotten? Then let us worship God.
Come, let us gather together and worship the Lord. Let us praise the Lord in, worship, in word and readings. God's love is so real that Jesus has suffered the cross from, for us. Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. With great joy we welcome you, Lord Jesus. The journey has been long and we have longed to enter the holy city. You come into our hearts and into our lives humbly, patiently encouraging us to learn and grow, to embark on journeys of hope and healing. Open our hearts today to hear your words as we sing praise to you. Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Please join me as we sing together hymn number 88, All Glory, Laud, and Honor. The peace of the Lord be with you. Greet each other with peace, the peace of the Lord.
The Lord has welcomed us into his holy temple, and we have greeted each other with words of peace and thanksgiving. Please remember that you are all invited to fellowship following worship by the coffee table. And we invite you to stay and have long conversations and fellowship after our worship together. We want to thank the children for bringing the palms in this morning. Thank you. As God has invited us into his house and we have welcomed each other, now let us come before God, confessing our sins and seeking God's forgiveness. Let us pray. God of heaven and earth, we give you thanks for sending us Jesus Christ in your name. Even though we profess to follow him, we confess that in times of trial, we too often deny him. Forgive us and heal us, we pray. Help us to refrain from putting our faith in the princes of this world, but to have faith only in Jesus Christ our Lord, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Rejoice! The Lord has come into your presence. You are the beloved ones of God. Know that God walks with you through this life's parade in times of celebration as well as in the times of he ahead. It is Jesus who leads the way, Jesus who died for your sins, and Jesus who lives again. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. As Jesus, as God gave his only son as a way for our salvation, let us, therefore, joyfully and generously consider the gifts that we then present back to God as we place our tithes and offerings before the Lord. Let us pray. Holy One, we give you thanks for the great deeds of salvation that you have done. Bless the offerings that we have brought today, offerings of thanksgiving, that they may further your kingdom in this world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us listen as the, as the choir brings to us an offering of music.
and I will apologize. I provided the wrong name of the hymn for our anthem today. And it's my fault. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Eternal God, whose word silences the shouts of the mighty, quiet within us every voice but your own. Speak to us through the suffering and death of Jesus Christ, that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we may receive grace to show Christ's love and lives given to your service. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Let us listen to and for the word of God. Let this mind be among you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. We've sung Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We've praised Christ coming into Jerusalem, and we've joined Christ here in worship in the temple this morning as we came together for Palm Sunday. Can you picture Jesus on that first Palm Sunday as he left Bethany on the day after the Sabbath? He was seated on a donkey or a colt, depending on which one of the scriptures you read. But with him came a multitude of disciples parading with him, placing their garments on the road and cutting branches off the trees and waving them over his head. <gasps> what a crowd it was. Now, some of you have kids that were like mine. My daughter was both played the flute in the parade and had to be with the cheerleaders. So the band would march first early in the parade, and she'd march playing her flute, and then she had to run back to the end, of, to the start of the parade again, and march with the cheerleaders a second time on the parade route. Well, picture Jesus is riding on a colt, and here comes the multitude of disciples, and you throw your garment on the ground, and Jesus rides over it. Then you pick it up and you run ahead because you're going to throw it on the ground again because the multitude traveled with him and praised him all the way along the road. So they're putting their garments down and ringing, hallelujah and praise, to be, praise be the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And then they're throwing their garment on the ground again and they're traveling with him. As he travels from Bethany to Jerusalem, and they're shouting. This is a loud crowd. They're noisy. And the people's houses that are, they're walking by and they're shouting. Maybe they're out there joining them. Or maybe they're standing at their window going, what is all that commotion? What are they making such a fuss over? We don't need all this noise. And the Pharisees are grumbling. Be quiet. We can't have this kind of commotion. The Romans will hear. They'll get mad. We need to stop. This is unsanctioned, unplanned, and an unpermitted parade. Stop it now. Jesus, make them stop. Jesus says, nope, not going to do it. If they stop, the stones themselves will begin praising God. So the parade continues. Two miles long, this is not a short little parade, two miles they parade from Bethany to Jerusalem 
Go in the gate right by the temple, in and into the temple. They praise God. The king is coming. Praise God. Hosanna. Let us all praise the Lord. They rode and walked and ran to Jerusalem. And if you think that was noisy, the commotion that followed when Jesus came into the temple was outrageous. Because he didn't come in and just quietly begin to teach. No, he walked into the temple and pushed the tables of the money changers over. And the coins went everywhere. And the people in the crowd went berserk. And there were people everywhere scattering to pick up the coins. Some who would return them to the priests. Some who would stuff them in their pockets and then run away real quick. But the noise and commotion was tremendous when Jesus came into the temple because he knocked those tables over. And above it all, Jesus' voice boomed out, my father's house shall be a house of prayer, not a den of thieves. And with that, he turned and walked out and walked back to Bethany. Every day, for the rest of the week, each day he came back, quietly this time, but came back to speak to the growing crowds. Every day there would be more people in the temple, new people in the temple, because they were coming for Passover. They were coming because they were part of the family of God coming to celebrate together. And many of them would travel many, many miles, perhaps a week or two on the road walking to get to Jerusalem for the Passover celebration. And Jesus would come into the temple and talk to them about the love of God, about how dearly God loved them, how precious they are to God. And to demonstrate how important they are, he would heal them. He would stretch out his hand and touch them, and he would teach them. And he reminded the Pharisees that God's ways are not the legalistic ways of power and tyranny, but the ways of compassion and justice and love. Until finally the day of Passover arrived. Jesus had the disciples then go and prepare a place for the celebration. He told them to prepare a very large room. We don't know if it had many tables in it or if most of the disciples sat on the floor. But Jesus and the apostles would have sat together and then remember he'd sent disciples out two by two, at least 70 of them earlier in his ministry. So that number has probably grown and he has invited his disciples to come eat with eat the Passover together with him. So we don't know how many people were in that room, 70, 80, 100, 150, who knows how many people were in that room and certainly Jesus counted among his disciples women who would sit around the edge or in a different part of the room, but would be there as well. And when the time came for the Passover meal, Jesus took his place with the 12 apostles, and the others sat in the room as well. And Jesus began to prepare them for what was going to come. I've wanted so much to eat this Passover meal with you before I suffer. He said, for I tell you, I will never eat of it again until it is given its full meaning in the kingdom of God. And he takes the cup and he gives thanks to God and tells them to share the cup, saying, I will not drink this wine until the kingdom of God comes. Jesus is preparing the disciples all of them one more time for what is coming. 
Jesus has already sacrificed a lot to walk with them, to heal and to teach while serving among them. But now the time has come for the fullness of his sacrifice to be revealed to them. Jesus will give up not only the divine self that he has already sacrificed to walk among them, but now he's getting ready to sacrifice the human self of who he is for them as well. So Jesus takes the bread, a loaf of bread given for that night for dinner, and he breaks it after having blessed it, saying this is his body broken for them. And he passes it all out to them. And they eat. And at the end of the meal, he takes the cup again and blesses it, saying, this is the cup of God's new covenant, sealed with his own blood, which is about to be poured out for them. He will die as God has decided for humanity's sins, just as the Passover lamb was sacrificed for the people of Israel. So Christ will be sacrificed for all humanity, represented in the cup. The Gospel of Mark tells us that they went and they sang a hymn after they had all finished their meal. And then Jesus went out to pray one more time. Out to the Mount of Olives. He went to pray just in case God might change God's mind one more time, just in case there might be another way to accomplish God's will without the pain and suffering. He knows what crucifixion is like. He's seen people hang on crosses for three and four days, hang there before they die. Hang there suffering. He knows what he's about to face. As they go into the garden, it's a place of quiet, and he goes to pray. Here we see the depth of the humanity of Christ, the man who fears the pain and death, just like each one of us at times fears pain and fears death. Jesus has been there, and he cries out to God, begging that there be a new plan, but submitting to what he knows is the only way forward. And he prays, and he prays. And as he prays, the soldiers arise, arrive to arrest him. He's put on trial before the Sanhedrin and the rulers of the temple, before Pilate and before Herod, and then back again to Pilate with false accusations and the distortions of the law. Neither Pilate or Herod can find any reason to put Jesus to death, but God's own people demand his death. Pilate tries to suggest that Barabbas would be a better choice, but oh no, let Barabbas go free crucify Jesus, the crowd shouts. And washing his hands of the matter, Pilate turns Jesus over to the Roman guard to be crucified along with two thieves who are already sitting in prison waiting for their time. Jesus, who has all power, chose to empty himself and permit what he knew would be agonizing pain for our sakes as he hung on the cross, suffered, and died. And even as he hung on that cross, even as he struggled for every breath, he prayed, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. As noon approached, the sky turned black, and Jesus cried out to the Father once more, Father, into your hands I command my spirit. And having said this, he hung his head, which would cut off any, any possibility of breathing anymore, and died. 
He chose his moment. Do you see how Christ put you and me first? Do you see how far Jesus went to serve you and me and humanity? Not just the apostles, not just the disciples, but all of us. As Paul said, said, first he put aside being God and took on the likeness of humanity. Then of his own free will, he gave his life, even to the point of dying on a cross. Jesus did that for us. This morning we celebrate that Jesus enters into Jerusalem, but Jesus enters into our lives in the same way as king, but as a king who comes in peace, humble and to serve. Jesus comes to guide our daily life, to guide the building of our relationship with God and with each other. He came to, to, to toss out anything that tries to get in the way of our relationship with God, just as he tossed out the money changers. And Jesus comes to heal our pain as he healed the blind and the lame in the temple that week and throughout his ministry. He wants to walk with us through life, to serve us by suffering with us daily and communing with us, just as he's joined the disciples at the table. There he teaches us of God's love, so immense and so powerful, a love that is so great it is willing to be broken and sacrificed for our sakes. Our salvation is not by accident. There is no other way except by Jesus because only Jesus was willing to give so much and to die for us. Like the father of the prodigal son, God wants... God wants us back, and I want this thing to hold on. Try it again. All right. Like the father of the prodigal son, God waits for us. Like the woman who lost a coin or the shepherd who lost a sheep, God searches far and wide for us. We are precious to God. And Jesus teaches us that the relationship we have with God is so precious, precious that it is worth giving up everything we have, like the man who gave up everything to go out and buy the, the precious pearl, the huge, big, precious pearl. God loves us more than we can imagine and wants us to know, know that he loves us and he wants to be a part of our lives. God does not want to just hear about what we do or watch us from afar. God really wants to know us and to be there when we have good days and when we have bad days. When we are sad and lonely, God is always right there. When it seems that everyone else has turned and let us down, it is Jesus who loves us enough to be right there with us, calming our fears, sending a ray of hope, shining as the light and the darkness, nudging someone to give us a call, or doing whatever it takes to help us carry on, if at all possible. Serving as Jesus served God is Jesus being with us all the way, every day. And that is what Jesus does, even to the point of dying on a cross to forgive our selfish, sinful ways. Because Christ was willing to go so far, because Christ died for us, God has exalted his name above all creation, above all heavenly beings, above all earthly things, and above all that is below. 
and ever shall be, that the name of Jesus shall, shall bring us all to our knees and we shall bow before him as King and Lord of all. We can call the entry into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday a triumph, but the true triumph is Jesus being willing to sacrifice himself for us on the cross, willingly giving up everything to take our sins away and to open the way for us to know God. Those who only know of Jesus, but do not spend time with Jesus, merely mock him. They are like the people in the crowd who hollered, crucify him, for they do not know God, and they dishonor God even if they sit in church every Sunday morning. There's a difference between practicing religion and building a relationship. God doesn't want us practicing our religion, keeping rules and regulations and traditions just for the sake of the way it's always been done. That's practicing religion. God wants a relationship with you. God wants to be your closest friend, your deepest love. God wants a relationship with each and every one of God's people. A relationship built on love because God is the one who loves us. And Jesus opens the way for that love to come to us. Jesus is our example. He's the one showing us how to have a relationship with God. And in that relationship, Jesus came to serve, showing us how to serve, how to care for each other, how to love as God loves us. And Jesus is the one constantly demonstrating to us how to build good relationships. Friends, know deep down in your heart of hearts, you are beloved. God loves you more than you can imagine. And because of that, Christ Jesus willingly died on a cross that you might be saved. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord to welcome us into the family of God. All praise be to God because it is God in Jesus Christ who loves us so much. If you don't know Jesus, if you don't know Jesus as your best friend and you want and need that relationship, find me. We're going to pray together about it. Let me help you build that relationship with Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Don't practice religion. Get to know Jesus Christ as your brother and your Lord. And if you know him, praise the Lord for it. Praise God and celebrate it because God treasures every one of you. Amen. As the people of God, God calls us to serve each other and to remember those who are in need of prayer. This morning, we remember the family of Rosemary, and I'm probably going to butcher this name, Creighton Swise. Rosemary died April 6th at the age of 102. Her service will be Monday morning. Are there others that we need to remember in prayer? You have a joy. Okay. All right, so we celebrate with the kids and the youth who are finishing their theater production this afternoon at 2. All right. All right. I understand we want to remember the people of Ukraine and, um, and, and their plight. We want to also pray for the Roman soldier, for the R Russian soldiers, that 
they would um, stand up for what's right and not be a part of the persecution that is occurring. Are there others that we need to pray for? Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, you, need, you know the needs of your people. You know the family of Rosemary. And we pray that you would be with them. You know the needs of those you place on our hearts and in our minds that are unspoken this morning. You know the joys and the celebrations of our lives, the great way that we try to follow you. Bless the people that you have placed on our hearts and minds. Be with those who grieve. Be with those who celebrate jobs well done and programs accomplished. Gracious Lord, what a joy it is to celebrate Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. The disciples gathered the colt for him to ride. People shouted Hosanna. They waved palm branches and placed their cloaks in the path of the colt. Even when some were cautious, Jesus reminded them that the, sun, that the stones would sing out, for triumph was truly coming to the holy city, triumph in a way that they could not imagine. So this day, help us to wave our palms, to sing and shout Hosanna. We want Jesus to ride into the places of tension and anger in our lives. We need Jesus to heal the hurts and establish his reign of peace forever, not only in our own land, but throughout the world. The parade is a good thing. It's not to be discounted or inconsequential to the events ahead. We need to shout with joy and let the shouts ring in our hearts. And with them, we pray that you would bring us hope, gracious Lord, hope where we have allowed fear and confusion to reside. Bring us healing where we have been wounded or where we have wounded others by our thoughts, words, and deeds. Bring us peace where we have been bombarded with anger and alienation. Bring us love. As you come into the holy city, made not with human hands, but with your heavenly reign, draw us close, wrapping us in your loving arms, as we open our hearts and minds to know you more fully, for it is in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. And now please stand and sing with me, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine.
praising my Savior all the day long as the children and the people praised the Lord as he paraded into Jerusalem. Go now in joy. Remember the day of celebration when Jesus boldly and humbly rode into the city of fear and anger. Do not be afraid. Do not fear, for you are a beloved child of God, but rather go in peace. And as you go, may the peace, mercy, joy, and love of God go with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.